Hi, and welcome to Round Robin. I am not Robin McCormick. I'm Mike Holtzclaw. I am guest hosting today, and I am here with my guest, Mississippi. Well, howdy, y'all. My name's Mississippi, and I'm not Round Robin either. Now, it's a pleasure to be here, and we're going to do the best we can while she's gone, right, Mike? That's all we can do. That's all we can do. Sounds good. And we are here today to talk about the upcoming Hampton for the Holidays Christmas program at the Hampton History Museum. And, Missy, what is the theme for this year? Well, there's nothing I love more than a long name. So it is Mississippi's Tornado Bait Presents Hampton for the Holidays Legend of the Christmas Spider. Um, I'm pretty excited to change things up this year. Tornado Bait has always uh, been this whole one man's trash is another man's treasure. Work with what you have. See the beauty in other things. And... When I heard this story, uh, old folklore, uh, Ukraine, Poland, Germany used this story about a spider that hid in the tree and saved Christmas. I just think about all the hidden beauty and everything and things that we don't look at, silver lining in the clouds. So I decided to go with this beautiful spider theme this year. It's a fascinating folk story. Where, where did you first hear about the Christmas spider? Honestly, I've been inspired. We just did a show with Coyote Beach, one of the bands playing, and it was a David Bowie themed show. And for some reason, just he got stuck in my head and we're looking to go more rock and roll this year. And I just, I, I was looking for different themes and the spider came up and I just thought it was terribly wonderful. They said that the spider showed up in a, a tree to an underprivileged family and the next morning they woke up and it had spun this beautiful silver web and some even say that the manger was actually nestled with a little web and i just i think that's a great idea to give such love to something that might often be looked over when you mentioned it to me i actually messaged a friend of mine from ukraine who's a little younger than both of us mm -hmm. but i uh asked her are you familiar with this because we hear it has roots in Ukraine and she said that yeah that she grew up being told that the spider made a web for the baby Jesus oh thank goodness because I'm beautiful I'm an old soul so I did ask all my friends they said they hadn't heard of it when they asked their grandparents they said their grandparents had so I, you know the Hampton History Museum we love being there this is our sixth year so I'm super excited about that um and we're making history, and why not use part of history and, and bring that back and put our new spin on it? Now, who are some of the other bands who are playing? Uh, like I said, Coyote Beach, but also the Lonely Teardrops. Katie Teardrop has been with us for uh, several years now, since the country Christmas one a couple of years back. Uh, we're also going to have you, we which is have very I was, exciting. I was trying to figure out how to bring that up. Yes, That's I am right. back we're gonna have, for my you're gonna, third year. For your third year, the MC, you're part of the team. Uh, we've got Dwight Easter. Look him up. Oh. Amazing art. Um, and guess who just said they're going to be with us, signing us out at the end of the night? We have got Chris Reckling from Wavy TV's The Hampton Roads Show, who is That's going right. to uh, come on and read an original narrative poem uh, from Christmas, about Christmas, right? set in Hampton. And who wrote that poem? Uh, we I, love that, that. That's mine. That's, that's right. Well, uh, I always like to say, if at the end of the night people say, boy, what a great poem, I will admit that I okay. wrote it. If people hate it, I'll say, I don't know where we found that. But yes, Chris Reckling from the Hampton Roads Show has, uh, has signed on. We're very excited to have him. You guys know how much I like arm candy, so of glad to have the both of you there. I'm going to need to become an octopus, grow more arms with we, all this talent. We do our best. All right. So um, It's uh, December 21st, by the way. December 21st at the Hampton History Museum. 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. It's going to be $5, and museum members getting free. So if you're thinking of what to get for Christmas, honestly, the museum has one of the greatest stores in there. I've been buying stuff for my sister and my mother every year there. Um, don't quote me on this, but I'm going to say $40 for a membership. And I hope I'm right, but it's a good gift. You get into all the museum shows, the Wednesday shows uh, all year long sure, for it. Live so, music, and, live music and, uh, documentary exhibits, film documentary screenings. films, everything. So Now, two years ago when I joined you for the first time on the show, we actually filmed it in your living room in front of your fireplace. Mm -hmm. And then last year we did it live, but without an audience. Right. Last year we did it live streamed from the museum, but because of the pandemic, we couldn't actually have people there 
this is my first year with you where we're going to have a live audience. How much of a difference does that make to you, having, having a live audience right there? I love it. I love Christmas. I love the holidays. Uh, whatever the reason for the season, I want to celebrate with you. But it is, uh, it is always awesome to have our friends with us. Tornado Bait is the people's band. We want to share. We want you to play instruments. We want you to be with us. Uh, it's all about sharing. And this is, a, this, is, this is an adult recital. Come see us all. It's for the community. We want you to join in. We want to start new songs to sing with you every year. You got some new songs that we're going to be hearing, or is it? it uh, t tell me a little bit about what you think the tone of the show is going to be. I think that this show is going to be uh, a little more rock and roll. Um, but that being said, we're still we're still based in tradition. It's going to be for everyone. Uh, you know, we've got Katie Teardrop, who is just uh, so much fun, uh, just uh, just an electric smile and personality with her rock and roll. Uh, very fun, uh, very very 60s rock. The next band is actually. Uh, very goth rock. It's going to be really interesting. And Tornado Bait is coming in with a new sound this year. As usual, we have a new lineup with some old friends. Tornado Bait, like you said, the people's band. And, and I love the local music scene. I have so many uh, friends and so many performers that I'm a fan of here in the local music scene. Tornado Bait may be the most distinctive band around here you really do make your audience and your fans part of the band part of the show has that been something you've always tried to do or did that just kind of generically happen that's why i started the band uh I, you wouldn't think to look at me i have a lot of anxiety i'm not here to hide it or anybody but uh, I, I love the city of Hampton. They've allowed me to use my art. They've allowed me to grow with my art. And they've allowed me to not be afraid of who I am. And I love the environment so much. And I know a lot of people get intimidated at shows. They're afraid to talk about it. We're just there to have a good time. I've got a place for you. You can hide. You can put a bag on your head and nobody has to look at you. Or you can get on stage with me. I just I want you to be a part of the band. I'm not better than you. I'm one of you, and I love all of you. How did the bag on the head start? Because, again, only show that I've ever been to that ends up with people wearing paper bags on their head. What a question, Katie Couric. What a question. <laughs> How do I answer that? Um, we'll give you the mild answer. Uh, a very long time ago, we were playing with somebody in the band. A uh, little secret, since we're exposing ourselves today, not only do I suffer from anxiety, but I have something called Marcus Gun. It's a lazy eye. If you're ever wondering why I'm wearing glasses on stage, I'll, I'll show you. It, it ain't pretty, but it's funny. It's a, it's, a, it's a party trick. Well, we had somebody else in the band that just so happened to have a lazy eye, and sometimes insecurities get the best of you. And we said, put the bag on your head. And that way you don't have to worry about anybody staring at you. And once we all tried putting this bag on our head, we realized how euphoric and it just removes everything it is a total i highly suggest that if you're home alone put a bag on your head a paper bag i will not be responsible for anything else just try a little paper bag and the whole environment changes so it actually started out over an insecurity and kind of became really fun and freeing and a new way to do things it's empowering it's empowering it really it's is. empowering it really is music is such a part of christmas whether it's traditional Christmas songs, rock and roll Christmas songs, songs that don't have anything to do with Christmas, but you, you want music on when you're gathering with people. What is, what is your earliest memory or what are your strongest memories of growing up with music and Christmas? Oh, come on, claymation. The claymation Christmases with the music specials. Um, all of them have been awesome, but one that really swept me off my feet that I found out about a couple years ago was The Immortals. And if you have not seen the claymation, The Immortals, about Christmas, it's a very different take on Christmas. It's quite beautiful. What kind of music? Um, what kind of music? Um, 
That's a tough one to describe. Uh, commercial <laughs> studio music. I love commercial studio pop music. I mean, the traditions, the Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, I got to be honest, we're sad that Jack Green won't be with us this year, but the Santa Claus Ho 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 song. Um, I, you, you, you know that's a favorite of mine. That's a favorite of everybody's in Hampton. Um, I, I just, I, I, love, I love the music to the movies in particular. I think they're great. Just all of the old little quirky songs. What is your favorite of the classic, old-fashioned TV Christmas specials? Charlie Brown, The Grinch, Frosty, The Snowman, Rudolph? Oh, I gotta say, I think my favorite moment is the David Bowie, Bing Crosby. Wow. And my favorite modern moment is the Funny or Die, where they do um, Will Ferrell as uh, Bing Crosby and David Bowie, and that's ridiculous, too. But yeah, I, 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 like, I like the crooners. I really like the Christmas crooner records. What do you love about doing the special at the History Museum? You said Hampton in particular has, has welcomed you. What, what is it that makes the museum and the Great Hall uh, such? You, you look at the Great Hall when it's empty and it doesn't cry out festive Christmas special. What, what makes it a, a special, distinctive place? It, Hampton is a super special place. I love Hampton. I'm a homeowner here. I have a college degree, a BFA in art. Uh, it's been very hard to use that. When I came here and the Hampton History Museum was just doing general shows, I, I proposed to them that I come there. and. They accepted me with open arms like a family member. The community, I asked you to be in my show. You were elated to say yes. The, the support that I've got from the Hampton History Museum and the community has been awesome. And I've been given so much as an artist to have here that I want to share it directly with my community. So how did, you said this is the sixth one you've done with the, uh, with the museum. And I'm guessing you started out performing on their Front Porch Music Series. We did. They put us on Halloween to temper our band a little bit so that people were ready for it. That was one of our first shows. So how did it come the first time that, I, that Mississippi and Tornado Bay hosted the Christmas special? I said, I want Christmas. I want Christmas. And I just came out and told them. And they said, well, what, what do you have prepared? What are you thinking? And I went with the first show, and as soon as the show was over, I said, I want Christmas next year. Uh, Christmas holidays in particular have always been so important to me. I've been traveling around since I was a child, state to state, uh, having a tradition, having something that is my own. Uh, it feels like a home. Everybody has their Christmas meal, but I've been everywhere. It's my home. I'm inviting you to the place that they've allowed me to have Christmas, and I want to invite my family my city, who supports me. Talk a little bit about how the show has grown and evolved in those six years. Obviously, the last two years, the, uh, the, the stinking pandemic came in and affected it, but how, how has the show grown over the years? It just continues to get better. We are making more friends. Uh, the ideas are just getting bigger and better. It just continues. We keep inviting people. More people are getting excited about Christmas and realizing no matter what your reason for the season, holidays. I use the word Christmas. You can, anything that you're celebrating is absolutely fine, but I keep seeing more people telling me. I sat down with my family this year. My teenage daughter sat down with us and watched this. Uh, my son sat down with us and watched this. Uh, my parents are excited to come. We are still children at heart, and Christmas is a children's holiday, and the bands get to have, I say it as a joke, but I mean it very seriously, it's an adult recital, and we all deserve that love and ability to express ourselves with each other and still have a good time and not take ourselves too seriously, and I've, over the six years, started to develop a really wonderful team of support, having you back, having Dwight Easter back, having Katie Teardrop and the Lonely Teardrops back. We are actually developing a tradition. Talk a little bit about Dwight's art because it is, it is so distinctive and I, I think you know this, that I, I took a liking to it so much at last year's program that I had Dwight do uh, an image of our dogs to give to my wife for Christmas last year. 
and she's a very hard woman to please. But she liked it so much that when our younger son graduated college last year, and she was, or earlier this year, and she was trying to figure out what to get him, she said that artist who did the dogs, could he do an image of Ben? And that was our graduation gift to Ben, was a piece of Dwight's art showing him. Talk a little bit about Dwight Easter's art and why you think it is the right tone for, uh, for what we're doing. Well, I'll definitely say it's it's digestible. I love it. Uh, I, I would describe him as somebody who went to art school. I would say if Matisse had talent, more talent, <laughs> if Matisse had more talent and more fun, that's how I would describe his work. It is, it, it, it's, it's almost flat as a compliment. Um, it's not overwhelming. It's beautiful. It's in essence, it is nothing like a character, but uh, the subtle nuances, the line work of it. When you think about a Sailor Jerry tattoo and that little line that makes the eye, there's, it's gestural that has strokes. It's uh, simple, but uh, beautiful blocky colors. Uh, I love it. I think it's unique. And like I said, it's like Matisse, which is something traditional, but it's also something very new. I love his use of digital tools with it. And he's also been a huge supporter in the music community and art community. I was not familiar with his, his work until the special last year. And well, and he was from Norfolk, and that's part of this is to bring them here. There's such a separation between the other side of the water with us and I want to help bring us together a little bit more. Well he did uh, last year I did I wrote a Christmas poem mm -hmm. and Dwight did the illustrations for it that went up on the uh, the video boards while the poem was being read and I wasn't sure what to expect and he just did such a nice job of um, zeroing in on the imagery from the poem and bringing it to life, mm -hmm. putting Santa in local restaurants and local businesses. And, uh, it was just so cool. Um, wrapping up here. Uh, no I will, pun I, intended. <laughs> pun intended. <laughs> um, I still have the little tornado bait guitar that was my present from last year when we had the rapping contest. Have you been practicing rapping? I have been practicing rapping. This is rapping with a W, not rapping... Like, I mean, we know, can try the other kind yeah. later. We can go put some bars down at the house. I can, but... I can do Hamilton, maybe. Okay. Yeah. Well, we're um, having another rapping contest this year, so I hope that you're working on I that. I will be ready. My fingers are, are ready. I'm like a cat with tape on my paws. I brown paper bags for so, everything. Last year, uh, my 87-year-old mother was watching the <laughs> live stream, and she couldn't get the sound on her computer, and she didn't know how to get the sound on the computer, and she figured if she tried, she would probably lose the picture instead of gaining the sound. But she watched the whole two-hour show with no sound. And did she still enjoy the visual? And I, I asked her, well, what did you think? And the first thing she said was, it looked like everybody was having a good time. Always. And so imagine how much better when <laughs> you can actually hear it and, and there's going to be people there uh, this is really exciting. What, what, one last thing. What do you want to tell people I, about, uh, about the Christmas special? I think that's really important. Love it or hate it, you're going to love hating it, or you're going to love loving it. And even if you don't like the way it sounds, it's still good to look at. There <laughs> it's you a, go. It's a win-win situation. Real quick, let's start a new tradition this year. We uh, wanted to start, I know you've heard of Elf on the Shelf. We wanted to start hagging a bag. I brought this for Robin because Robin is not a hag. I brought a little fool monkey like myself for her and... Uh, you know, hopefully this can get into shenanigans for her, but we will see you December 21st at the Hampton History Museum. Hampton for the holidays. Hampton for the holidays, Legend of the Christmas Spider. We're going to have the Lonely Teardrops, Coyote Beach, Tornado Bait, Mike Holtz, Claude, Dwight Easter, and Chris Reckling and Friends. We'll be excited to see you there December 21st, 6 to 8 p.m. and Tornado Bait and Friends. And thanks so much for having us. I love you guys. Happy holidays. Thank you. <laughs> This, thank you, Missy, very much for coming in. Uh, this has been Round Rob and I am Mike Holtzclaw. Thank you for watching.